Blackness isn't a monolith, and identifying as a black person in America can mean a variety of things, especially when it comes to different voices from across the diaspora. I myself am first generation and identify as Nigerian American, and during Black History Month, as we celebrate the history of important black figures, I was curious what the experience is like for other black first generation folks in this country. When it comes to our different cultures and heritages, what exactly does black history really mean? Thank you guys again. So I got together a group of us to chat about it. My name is Torsten Oganju, Nigerian. I'm Sian Dunbar. My mother is Ethiopian and my dad is Liberian. I'm Lucy Dorless and my family's from Haiti. My name is Kwame Watson Zerbo. My father's from Ghana. My mother's from Pittsburgh. All of us were virtually strangers to one another. But as we continued to talk, we learned that we had a lot of similarities and through our conversation, we delved deeper into these roots of history through one of the most important branches, identity. Growing up here in America or growing up in the States, right, where your family or your parents are maybe from somewhere else, and this idea that I think a lot of first generation people maybe deal with where it's like, feeling enough of one group or not enough of the other group. And you all's experience is that something that you've maybe had to battle with as you've kind of formed your identity or is it something that you've kind of always known about yourself or felt pretty confident in or strong in, in one way or the other? In California, we have, I mean, we have, we have a huge African community in Southern California. So for us, we'd have African parties. And you know, all of us probably dealt with it. We have an African community. The parents obviously had that one song and we party till two or three o'clock in the morning. But for us, I mean, for me, we had a huge, a huge community. In terms of saying I am African-American, I tell some of my friends as well, like, I'm proud. I know where my family's from. I know where my lineage go. I know the, the tribe, the city, the town in which we were from. I think my experience was a little different. Growing up, I had my church community. South Florida has a very large Haitian population. So it was great to be around other Haitian people uh, growing up in church. But I think for me in the school setting, it was very hard. Um, there was a lot of teasing. I attended a school where um, there was a day where it was called Haitian Day. And it was not a day where we were celebrating those who were Haitian. It was a day where Haitian students were actually attacked or beat up. I wasn't going around like, you know, with my flag saying, hey, I'm Haitian. And even when someone would say, what are you? I would say, oh, I was born here. I'm, I'm American, I'm, you know, I'm black American. At that time in middle school, I was fearful of saying that I was Haitian, fear of being beat up because of it. I felt sometimes that, you know, again, I wasn't Ethiopian enough or I was Nigerian enough. And then I wasn't black American or African American enough. My friends would come over, and they would always say to this day, you know, your mom gives us snacks and they, she gives oranges and peanuts. What about potato chips and other things? And I was like, I thought that was pretty normal. I guess it wasn't. So I guess I might be the only um, African born person here. So I moved to the States when, when I was eight. And so I think it was an interesting mix of other people kind of othering me out just based on the name. and having a very strong accent back then, but being eight and not necessarily understanding, it's like, I speak English. I uh, articulate my words very well. I started noticing, I forcibly um, tried to assimilate like the way I speak to match the slang or the lingo of like the other kids. And over time, it just kind of meshed all to where it's like, I this is what I sound like now. There was someone else I was talking to, she was saying, you know, in school growing up during Black History Month, we obviously learn about important figures, um, celebrate important figures, but a lot of the scope is U.S. history or important Black figures in America. And she's like, that's not my history at all. So I want to ask you guys that question, especially now during this month, Black History Month, what is Black History for you? Black History Month for me is a month of Pride. Uh, Black History Month is every month for me. But specifically during this month, uh, I think I took pride in telling people that I was African or, you know, first generation American and giving them the history that I knew that my parents gave me. I guess for me, Black History just represents all the, the men in my life. I've had a lot of great examples of people that are entrepreneurs, my grandfather, people that are chemical engineers, 
superintendents of schools where I think Black History Month allows us to celebrate those people. We also celebrate people like Robert F. Smith. You know, I think people are really starting to take notice. One of the things that I always kind of struggled with is that a lot of like, Black history in the U.S. is typically focused around uh, kind of civil rights movements in general. I don't think that there's there's enough awareness in bringing in other history of, you know, um, like Haitian Revolution and things like that to the table. Before becoming a school counselor, I was a history teacher, and I put so much effort into all of the Black history month initiatives that we did at the school. Sometimes you hear people say, well, it's like you said, it focuses on um, U.S. history, but that is also our history too. And I embrace that and I'm very proud of it. And um, and I and I share that with my students and everyone. There's so much depth and there's so much relatability in us being African-American, but from different places. It's a beautiful month for us to just kind of look at the accomplishments of like what we've contributed. I think that's like the biggest thing for me because when I think of my history, it's more so like our contributions and what we've provided to the world in general from art, culture, and everything. What are parts of your culture, your heritage that you're really happy that you've learned more about or that your family sort of instilled in you? Haitian people are very hard workers and I've seen that both and my parents, my family going back to Haiti is that strong work ethic that we have, that family orientation. Those are the same things that I pass on to my son now. It's like working hard um, and I'm very, very proud of that. And and just very proud that to be the first um, black nation in the Western hemisphere to gain its independence. My family instilled a sense of community and I love that, you know, so to this day, I'm, I'm that person, maybe overbearing, that something goes wrong, I'm there 24 hours a day. If something is good, I'm celebrating it with you 24 hours a day. For me, you know, really speaking to the family, it's just fearless. To see what we as a people can do, when we actually just put our minds to and nothing's going to stand in our way. You know, to be fearless. Everything that you guys just said, like spot on, like perseverance and just knowing that uh, if there's a will, there's a way, and the only thing that's stopping you is hard work and getting things done. I think that's one of the biggest things, like, from a cultural standpoint, that's instilled in, like, any African in general. It's, if you want something, you gotta work for it. There's no way, there's no other way around it.